Greetings and welcome. Welcome back to Probing, Probing Revelation, Chapter 5, The Keys to the Government. With this post, we begin to explore the seals opened by our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a need to understand these seals, and God willing, we will. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven or in earth nor under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look therein. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open to read the book neither to look therein. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all of the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy, to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The above message is clear, and leaves no room for argument. Jesus redeemed us with his blood. To be redeemed is to be purchased paid for, bought at a price, and what a price it was. Revelation continues, Revelation 5.11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times, ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing, and every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. Think for a moment about our leaders. They are leading us as well as they can, but they are only weak human beings given over to all kind of temptations and human error. Poor foresight, lust, the love of money, power, ego, the whole wide range of human temptations and frailties. Now think for a moment what living under the reign of Jesus Christ will be like. He will have God's power and he will have no need to usurp power from anyone. He will be given heavenly riches and will never be tempted by the spirit of greed. He will be given riches without end and will share those riches with us. Imagine a government giving you wealth. <laughs> he will have God's wisdom, so all of his decisions and decrees will be perfect. He will aid the poor and wealthy alike. He will rule us as a perfect king in a perfect government on a perfect world. And he will be given honor and glory and blessing. What a wonderful world this would be. Chapter 6, Opening the Seals. Jesus was asked by his disciples about the end of the world age and the signs that would announce it. Matthew 24, 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The first thing Jesus said was that many would come in his name, deceivers claiming to be Christ, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
What these deceivers are actually claiming is not that they are Jesus Christ himself, but rather that they are the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. 1 Corinthians 6.15 Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Think about this. Think about the cults. Think about Jim Jones and how he caused the death of so many while claiming to be the body of Christ, saying, I am he. And the vast number of sinful churches claiming to be the body of Christ while teaching anything but the gospel. Today, these deceivers abound. There will be many. Jesus said, and today, there are many deceivers claiming to be the body of Christ. Many, Jesus said, can you name some? Are some better deceivers than others? Are you able to recognize them all? Next, Jesus said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. But that's not the sign of the end. The end is not yet. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Revelation 2 speaks of these things. Revelation 6, 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. Revelation 6, 2. And I saw and beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat therein to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. Next, Matthew adds famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Revelation answers, Revelation 5, 6, 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the beast, third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, famine. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, which are food measured out. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Olives and grapes grow well in a drought. Other crops fail. See thou hurt not the oil in the wine. One reason for this is that the grape plant pumps cold water into their leaves at night. This condenses the dew in the air and the moisture then drips onto the ground and onto the root system of the plant. In this way grapes can survive when other plants wither and die. Revelation 6, 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Revelation 6, 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, plague, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, deadly plague, and power was given over them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and hunger and death and with the beasts of the earth. Jesus calls these events the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The great tribulation or time of sorrows has lasted from about the time of John, the writer of Revelation, until now, almost 2,000 years later. And many, many souls have been saved for God during this time, Revelation 7, 9. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And one of the elder answers saying to me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Next, chapter 7.